Hi, I'm Dr. Amber, and on this channel, we talk about all things peptides, wellness, and optimization. I'm so excited that you're joining me for this episode on histamine. Hope this is so helpful for you. And again, medical disclaimer, this is not personalized medical advice. This is for educational and informational purposes only. And always talk to your doctor before incorporating any new supplement, medication, or lifestyle practice. So what is histamine intolerance? Essentially, histamine is released for three different reasons. The first one is that it really alerts the brain, right? So it can keep you up at night. It's one of the reasons why histamine, it's very stimulating for the brain. Number two is it helps with stomach acid production, right? So we need histamine for normal digestion. It is produced in the gut, but high levels can cause problems. Number three, histamine is released in response to injury or allergy. If you've heard about histamine before, it's probably in regards to allergies or the itchy eyes, itchy red eyes, runny nose, all of your seasonal allergy symptoms. So let's dive in and talk about histamine and solutions to keep histamine at bay as well as the symptoms of high histamine. Histamine is a chemical produced in the gut. It's produced by what we call granulocytes. Granulocytes consist of eosinophils, basophils, and mast cells. And so eosinophils are, and basophils are types of white blood cells. Mast cells are really a cell that can essentially release histamine in high amounts. All three of these are histamine producing. Mast cells are more set in one place, whereas basophils and eosinophils can move all around. So what are some of those causes of histamine intolerance? Well, environmental toxins is a huge one for many people now in the world that we live in, as well as hormone imbalances, just emotional stress could affect histamine levels. Certain medications, I'm going to show you a diagram of all the different types of medications that can affect histamine or increase histamine production. And those are NSAIDs that are used for pain relief, like ibuprofen and aspirin, antidepressants, things like Prozac, Zoloft, immune modulators, things like Plaquenil, metformin, the diabetic medication, antiarrhythmics, so any beta blockers, antihistamines, even things like Benadryl could affect this, as well as your histamine H2 blockers, things like Zantac or Pepsid. So we know that these mast cells can essentially degranulate or release histamine. And a lot of times it's an environmental trigger for that. It could be a medication, could be emotional stress, and that can lead to these higher histamine levels being produced, mostly in the gut, because that's where a lot of the immune cells are. We also know that some of these inflammatory conditions in the gut, like IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, IBS, or irritable bowel syndrome, as well as celiac disease, can lead to higher levels of histamine in the gut. So there is a really strong gut health histamine connection here. We know that histamine produces vasodilation, so it opens up those blood vessels, and it also causes hyperpermeability, so that can lead to inflammation. Histamine intolerance can be really tricky to diagnose and treat because there's so many triggers in the environment, foods, could be mold, it could be things that are airborne that could be causing this response. And when most people think about histamine, they're thinking about seasonal allergies, but there's so many other health conditions that may be dealing with histamine issues. And oftentimes it's not an allergy to histamine itself. It could just be the inability to break histamine down. The reason that you might have this is there's really two enzymes that are responsible for breaking histamine down. One is called DAO and one is called HNMT. And you can test these on a genetic test. DAO is actually a solution because you can take that in a supplement form if you do not have enough of it. So sometimes solving for the supporting your body to break down histamine can be really helpful in resolving this. While there may be a genetic component to histamine issues like DAO and HN. MT, these enzymes that we can test for in our genes, there are also other potential causes like nutrient deficiencies, things like copper and zinc, B6, and vitamin C being deficient in the diet or in supplementation. There may be nutrient excess in the diet like histidine in the diet, which is an amino acid. High levels of protein can trigger 
histamine levels to be elevated. And then we talked about all the medications that can really affect histamine levels. NSAIDs are a big one. A lot of women are taking popping pills of ibuprofen and pain relievers every month for their cycle, and that can really lead to histamine issues. And then there's all those high histamine foods, which as women, we naturally crave and have at women's events like wine, cheese, processed meats like salami, pepperoni, aged cheeses, anything that's fermented can really cause a histamine elevation. Kombucha, kimchi, sauerkraut, these can also be very problematic. They're fermented. A lot of people think they're good for the gut, but if you have histamine issues, if you have gut inflammation issues or candida overgrowth issues, which often go hand in hand with elevated histamine, then maybe these foods aren't so good. The other big trigger is leftover food. And I am such a, I hate wasting food, so I'm such a fan of leftovers. But if you have histamine issues, you either want to take those leftovers and freeze them right away, or you need to eat them within a day. Because the longer the food is in the fridge, the more histamine it's developing. And then you eat that if you already have gut inflammation issues, IBD, IBS, celiac, or allergy, allergic issues, then you really don't want to be consuming leftovers more than 24 hours old. Other really quite healthy foods that could trigger histamine is yogurt, right? Sauerkraut, we mentioned pickles, even things like mushrooms and avocados can trigger histamine issues. And the big one is anything that is fermented or an alcoholic beverage, beer, wine, sake, anything, ciders, they all will trigger that histamine response. So if you notice that you do worse after alcohol or you get that flushing sensation on your face after you drink a glass of wine, that could mean that your body's reacting to the histamine in that drink. There's also the hormonal balance piece for many women and men because men can tend to have higher estrogen levels and lower testosterone levels now, but an estrogen excess, too much estrogen can make the histamine situation worse. So when a woman, that estrogen rises during her cycle, that's usually when she's most sensitive or has a lot of these histamine symptoms get worse, right? Whether it be skin rashes or allergic symptoms, these things will get worse during this week or so of high estrogen, and then they'll get better once that estrogen levels out. High levels of stress can also cause issues with histamine through cortisol and, and hormone dysregulation. We know that gut dysbiosis, so having a lot of those bad bacteria elevated, a lot of good bacteria that are not present, that can happen from taking antibiotics frequently, as well as just not having a very diverse nutrient-rich diet. So if you're eating a lot of those bland foods, fast foods, processed foods, there's usually some dysbiosis going on that can feed into the histamine issue. And then we know the presence of pathogens. So Lyme disease, candida overgrowth is a huge one with histamine issues. EBV, right? Long haulers with COVID, we can see issues with histamine, right? And this is just a part of that whole immune dysregulation piece. When your body has a pathogen there, it's constantly managing that and using its immune cells to fire and wire for that pathogen. And so that can really affect the histamine production as well. Thanks for tuning into the channel. So happy that you joined us for this. I hope you found this video helpful and definitely tune in for future episodes if you have any experiences related to histamine intolerance, histamine issues, what you have found helpful here. Would love to hear those in the comments and so grateful you're a part of this community. This is the Peptide Doc, and I'll see you in the next video.